It's a joy to be with you this evening. I just want to give God praise and thanks uh, that we are alive and we can come to worship him tonight. Let me hear you say amen. Put your hands together if you love Jesus. We are going to have some great times together. So first of all, let me thank you all for coming. I'm so excited to see you. Do we have any visitors coming? Any of our visitors? Wave your hands, visiting friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so happy to see our executive secretary, Dr. Mansuela. Just, just stand and wave again for me, please. Praise the Lord. And, uh, we have um, Dr. Charles, assistant to the president. He prayed. Stand and just wave for me. Beautiful. Yes, yes, right here. Dr. Bartholomew. Right here, right here. Stand, uh, assistant to the president. Just stand and wave. Ministerial secretary. So happy. These are my my right hand and Ça, my, bread, what, my oye. hold my hand up. And we have a host of our pastors who are standing, standing by me. All, All our pastors, please stand and wave. All our pastors, please stand. Please stand. Please please stand. stand. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. God bless you. And some are on the outside doing yeah, some work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Merci, appeal. And this young man. Yes, I uh. Uh, he's my armor bearer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, young preacher of righteousness. <laughs> I, I'm going to give him some training this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Dr. Andy, Dr. Lagodel. I just want to thank you for your great leadership. You're doing a great job in the Haitian community. And a great job for Greater New York Conference. May God continue to bless you. So happy to have you. I'm excited to see the candidates for baptism. Come on, church, let me hear you say amen. I am so happy. This is the best decision of your life. I have two grandsons here. I'm going to invite them to come up here. My Lanzo is 12 years of age. He just celebrated his 12 year 12 birthday a few days ago. And Michael, I don't remember how old Michael is. So let Michael, me, how old are you, Michael? How many? Seven. Seven. Four? Seven. Nine? Seven. 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 Oh, oh. <laughs> Michael is seven years of, of age. And I am delighted to let you know that he's... They are following in their grandfather's footsteps in preaching and in, and in preaching, in preaching. <laughs> but, they also, but they also sing. So I would like them to give you a little treat this before I start my sermon. So give us that music there. My strength is in your 
Concert for you. Pour ta programme, nous allons faire un concert pour nous, mes amis, et nous disons amen. My topic tonight is defiance. Nous allons parler à ce soir de combattre. And you know the a world in which we are living in. Nous connaissons le monde que nous vivons là. Is a defiant one. Son son monde combattre. But before I get into my message, avant d'entrer dans le message, let me tell you what I have in store for you tomorrow. Qui demeure nos amis pour nous demain soir. Because tomorrow night, but parce que demain soir, is going to be a special night. Pour ce soir, un soir spécial. Now, if I can get this thing to work. Just change it for oh, change it for me there, please, because it's not moving. Okay, we're going to talk about in love with the teacher. I'm going to share some story with you tomorrow night. If somebody tell you it won't sound the same way, you have to come for yourself. And you have to bring someone tomorrow night in love with the teacher. De then on Monday night, de, uh, no, lundi soir, <laughs> did you hear what I say? Monday night, lundi soir, lundi soir. The, 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 the topic is uh, ça nous uh, stand your ground. Copy la place. Stand your ground. That's the topic for Monday night. And I will tell you a little more about this topic tomorrow night. But listen to me, all those of you, those of you who have children and grandchildren, 
Not only do I want you to come, no I want you to bring those children and grandchildren. Because there are some things happening in this society of ours that they need to know how to stand ground. Don't wait until somebody fool them. And you lose them. Come let me tell them. How to stand their ground. Amen. Amen. So we move into tonight's message. Defiance. Combativity. No, this is not going to help me too well. Let me start about defiance in the home. Let me start about defiance in the home. Okay. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. This is not working right. It keeps. See, it's going backwards. Someone take it and work on it for me, please. Okay. And uh, just look at me now. You know I'm handsome oh, enough. <laughs> come on now. Come on. Look, look at the preacher. Forget that. We'll get it fixed by tomorrow, okay? Now you, you have a very handsome preacher. You don't believe me? Ask, honey, tell them how handsome I am. Stand up and tell them how handsome I am. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, uh, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. <laughs> Honor thy father and thy mother. <laughs> that thy days may be long upon <laughs> the land. <laughs> I'm talking to you, young people. <laughs> because we're living in an age <laughs> when we have such defiance uh, among, among the younger generation <laughs> that they don't understand <laughs> that honoring their parents. <laughs> is a blessed thing. The lack of respect for parental authority is amazing and alarming. I was in You see, I just say he was a good guy. And he was doing a good job. He came and whispered in my ears that I am mixed up. <laughs> he said, I'm mixed up. I am, am pressing the pressing the backward button instead of the forward button. Honey, am I mixed up, honey? <laughs> Him say I'm mixed up. Him <laughs> say I'm cooked. <laughs> 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 I say, <"Mama." laughs> we're going to have a fun time. <laughs> when, when you come, <laughs> you're going to laugh in Jesus. Amen? <laughs> we just want to have happy, fun time together. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that all right? <laughs> Is it okay to make you laugh? And to talk about Jesus? We are together. You know, I was in a Macy's store. I bought a nice gift for my wife. But my hands are so clumsy that I, I didn't trust myself to wrap it so neatly for her. So I took it down to the wrapping section. And I'm standing in line. I'm waiting my turn to get my gift wrapped. And there was this little girl. She, she was making havoc in the store. She goes around and she keep the thing. And she pulled the things off the dresser. And she throws things around. And I'm saying, my God, where's her mama? 
And all she's saying, stop it. Tout le monde a dit, stop it. Stop it. Stop. But the more she says, stop it, is the more the child throw away everything. You know, I, I, I'm just itching. I'm just itching. I, I, I wanted to go over there and just give the child a little holy righteousness. But you can't in this country. So, so, so when it was so embarrassing, the mother went over to the daughter and she said, stop, stop, stop it. She said, you hit me. You, you, you hit me. Bye, 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 don't hit me. No, 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 no. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, the mother felt a little embarrassed. So she went back over the child and said, don't hit your mommy, don't hit your mommy. The child said, you hit me again. You hit me again. Bye, bye, bye. And so I'm just there watching the drama. Mother hit child. Child, child hit mother. No, 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 no. Mother hit child. Child hit mother. Mother hit child. Child hit mother. You know who got the last hit? Which of you, which of you said the child? Honey, there are some folks here that need psychotherapy. The child, which child? The mother. Because the child was not about to take her hit. So she, she had to accept the mother was the child said, Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Yeah. I'm talking about defiance. Defiance in the home. I was on a Delta flight. Coming, coming back from LA. And there was a father sitting beside me. I am, I am in a window seat. And the father has her daughter in his lap. Oh, so the plane starts taxing out on the runway. Okay, but uh, And the flight attendant is walking down. And he saw the girl in, in his daddy's lap. And he said, she has to get in her seat now and put her seat belt on. So the father lift up the girl and put her in the middle seat. And she climbed back into the father's lap. The attendant is coming back up and saw the girl in the lap. He says, sir, we are taxing out. She has to get into her seat. So she, he lift up the girl and put her in her seat again. And she goes back in the father's lap. Now the plane is taxing on fast enough. Fast. And the, the flight attendant looked down and saw the girl in the father's lap. So he came over and said, Sir, she, she has to get into her seat now. He said, she won't listen to me. Can, can you tell her for me? And the attendant says, get in your seat and sit. And she moved over and sat in her seat. Defiance in the home. There's a disorder that is called a positional defiant disorder. It's a, a disruptive behavior in children and adolescents. Frequent episodes of anger. Hostile behavior. Intolerance for authority. And this defiance that you find, it's hurting the fabric of the home. So when the Bible says train up a child, we as parents and grandparents we have a job to do. 
You know, my friends, there was a time when children used to go to church. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. There was a time when children used to go to church. A time when children used to read their Bibles. A time when children used to pray. But social media has taken that away now. Our children spend more time on social media than they spend singing a song for Jesus. Reading the word of God or praying and the result of that is that we are having a defiant set of children defiant in the home but let me move on defiant in the school because the lack of respect for teachers is abominable many of you are teachers here I know that and my heart goes out for you because what you have to put up with these days in the classroom is a shame is a shame and the worst thing is you're getting little pay for the hardest work and when the defiance exists in the home it comes right in the school I was in a country doing a meet a series like this and the, the principal for the school asked me to come to address the school and then he said he wanted me to talk to a boy 10 years of age and so he came into my office I'm sitting down in the office and the chair is there for this 10-year-old boy. The boy came and sat in my seat in the chair and put his foot up like this. So I reach over and take the foot and drop it down. So he started talking to me. He says, Dr. Smith, Dr. Smith, you see me? Oh, my teacher is afraid of me. Uh, oh, yes, she's afraid of oh, me. Oui, vraiment, vraiment. Because I told her um, that if she troubles me, uh, si bon problème, if she talks to me and I don't like how she talks uh, to si me, me I'm going to box her. Oh, ma passe nous and when I box her, oui, ma passe nous if she don't like it, uh, si bon ça, and she go home and tell her, husband. And when he comes, I'm going to box him too. Defiance in the home. Defiance in the school. Most of you, if not all, you know that I'm a, I'm a licensed therapist. So from time to time, I have to deal with some tough cases. And this lady sought my psychotherapy. Her son was suspended from school and would not be admitted back in school until he can get a letter from a psychologist or, or a therapist that the boy is no threat to school. The boy wrote a letter to a girl. He says, I am going to kill you. I'm talking about a 14-year-old boy. He says, I'm going to kill you. And after I kill you, I'm going to rape your dead body. 14 years of age. I'm talking about defiance in this school. There was another one. 
he sent a text to his friend. Text by his and in that text, it, <laughs> that text ta- it says, my kill list. Oh, the list of people he's going to kill. List including his classroom teacher. Some of his students. And his gym teacher. I'm talking about the science in the school. But if you have defiance in the home, it goes to the school. And if you have defiance in the school, it goes into the society. If you will recall, it was August 11, 2017. Over there in Charlottesville, La Charlottesville, it was a day of rage, oh, c'est rage, la rage a day, day of hate and violence and death. White, white nationals okay. visited the campus of the University of Virginia. La, la campus, uh, Virginia. And they started a rally, a vigil. It was a vigil with racists and Bigger. As they marched, they were showing defiance to the society. I had the privilege of visiting Rwanda. You will recall in 1994, there was this tribal war between the Hutus Hutus and the Tutsis. The Hutus call the Tutsis cockroaches. And they say they had to get rid of them. In less than three months, more than one million Tutsis were slaughtered. Plus que un million de Tutsi, yo te tué. That's a picture. Ça c'est une vie, une image. Of one of the young men that survived. C'est un petit garçon qui va te mourir lui-même. I've had the privilege of going to Rwanda. Tu as le privilège d'aller à Rwanda. And speaking to some of these individuals. Tu avec quelqu'un monde ça yo. They told me what went on. Yo te dis ce qui s'est passé. The travest the, the, the travesty that took place. Oh pour pour bien mauvais bagage qui passé. And how these people were def- Defiant in the society. I've had the privilege of going to South Africa. And the great Nelson Mandela. Who spent 28 years in prison. Fighting for the defiance that was going on. The racial injustice that was going on. But if you want to talk about defiance in the society. You have to go back to 2020. The January 6th insurrection. These people stormed the capital. Defiant to law authorities. Defiant to elected officials. Defiant to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about a defiant society. You know, in this defiant society of ours, you cannot talk to people about spiritual things. Talk, talk to them about politics. Talk, talk to them about sports. Talk to them about business. Talk, talk to them about the love life. And that's okay. No problem. But the moment you talk about spirituality, the moment you talk about the love of God, they are defiant. They cut you off. They don't want to hear you. Defiant. I pulled up at a service station. It was an Easter holiday. And the service attendant is serving gas to a taxi driver. And he said to him, 
Are you going to church on Sunday? Est-ce qu'on va à l'église dimanche si Dieu veut? Referring Easter Sunday. Il a parlé de dimanche pas. Are you going to church? Est-ce qu'on va à l'église? And the taxi driver says. Et monsieur qui a conduit le taxi a dit. Church? L'église? Oh no. Oh no. God and I are not on terms. Moi même avec mon Dieu, nous pas ensemble. He said it jokingly. But I challenge you. If the doctor should diagnose that he has cancer. He will find God. He said that now. But if a train wreck, a train hit his body. And he's on life support. He called for prayer. People will be defiant. Les gens capables de euh, combattre. They feel they don't need God. Ils pensent qu'ils pas besoin de Dieu. Defiant. Ils combattent. Don't, don't talk to me about religion. Pas parler de religion ensemble avec moi. But when disaster comes. Euh, les désastres viennent ici. Anybody remember 9/11? Est-ce que nous sommes 9/11? Is there anyone who remember 9/11? Churches were packed after 9-11. Churches were packed even on Wednesday night. People were finding God after the disaster. The only reason why church wasn't packed after COVID is because people were still afraid to meet. In disaster, we remember God. But when things are going okay, we are defiant. It reminds me of a king in the Bible. His name is Belshazzar. The Bible tells us that he prepared a royal banquet. He invited thousands of his lords. He had his concubines and his friends. It was going to be a night of defiance. Let, 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 let's pick up the story. Daniel chapter 5 and verse 2. He says, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden vessel and, and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princess and his wives and his concubines may drink therein. My friends, there are two lessons that I want you to learn from this Belshazzar story. Two lessons. Two lessons. The first one. This defiant and arrogant king. Okay. Should have learned the, the lesson from his his the Bible says far his father, but it is his grandfather. The Bible says he took the sacred vessels that were taken out of the temple in Jerusalem. Jerusalem no? And he and his concubines drank from it. The Bible says while he tasted the wine. Listen to me carefully. Tasting forbidden things. Can lead to trouble. Did you hear what I say? Tasting forbidden things. Can lead to trouble. Teen pregnancy. Is a result of tasting forbidden things. A young lady came to me sometimes. She said, Pastor, I got in a little trouble. I'm wondering what this girl did now. Did, did he break her? Did she break her mama's glass? Why she got in a little trouble? So I said, what happened there? She said, I am pregnant. 
I say, you are what? I am pregnant. I say, no, dear. That is not little trouble. That is big trouble. You are sentenced for nine months at hard labor. That's, that's big trouble. And all that comes afterwards, that's big trouble. Young people, taste Tasting forbidden things. I say it can lead to a lot of problems. I know of a man. He was tasting forbidden things. The Bible says wine is a mocker. Strong, strong drink is raging. Whoever is deceived by it is not wise. He lost his wife. He lost his child. He lost his home. He lost his job. All because of drinking. Alcohol destroy his home. Tafia ka detwi yo fami. Destroy his life. Il détruit la vie. And yet he was still drinking. Et malgré ça, il continue à boire. Tasting forbidden things. Lo boire, lo goûter, ça qui est interdit. Can lead to a lot of trouble. Ça ramène un gros problème. The Bible says. La Bible dit non. Belshazzar. Belshazzar. Commanded to bring the golden and the silver vessels. Il m'a demandé de venir avec vase d'or et d'argent yo. From the temple. Que au sorti dans le temple là. Belshazzar knew better. You know why he knew better? His grandfather Nebuchadnezzar defied the God of the universe and God cut him down and he had to leave his kingdom and go out in the grass and eat like a donkey. He eat the grass like a donkey. And he stayed out there in the field for seven years until he repented of his sins and acknowledged the God of the universe. That, that happened to Nebuchadnezzar. So the grandson Belshazzar should have known what happened to his grandfather when, when he defied God. And he should not defy God. So the first lesson from the Belshazzar story don't taste forbidden things. Here is the second lesson. Do not defy God. Did you hear what I say? Do not defy God. Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, Belshazzar, was defiant. He should have known better. For those who know better, should do better. Uh, turn to your neighbor on the left and from you and say, neighbor, come on, neighbor, those who know better must do better. Turn to your neighbor on the right. Say, neighbor, those who know better must do better. My friends, let me ask you. Do you know better? Do you know better? Do you know better? Come on, tell them, do you know better? And are you doing better? One, one of the sins of our time is a lack of respect for the sacred and the holy. Let me share with you some people who showed no respect for the Almighty God. John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. He said. Mais ça, Monsieur dit. Christianity will end. It will disappear. 
He says, Jesus, listen, Jesus was okay. But his subjects were too simple. My friends, the subjects of Jesus are not too simple. His subject is about grace. It was grace that brought me here. Grace grâce on the cross. Grâce it was grace. Grâce why I'm here today. Grâce, grâce, grâce why you're here today. Grâce, the subject of Jesus is not too simple. Grâce, His subject is about grace. Oh, le sujet de Jésus, c'est à de His la subject grâce. is about forgiveness. Oh, what the God we serve. Oh, God, oh, Dieu, Who pardons our iniquity. Oh, Who forgives our transgressions. His subject is not simple. Forgiveness is not simple. Forgiveness is the grace of God. His subject is not simple. His subject is love. The songwriter says, Oh, my friends, uh, love lifted me when I was sinking deep been sin. Love lifted me. His grace is not simple. His grace, his word is not simple. His word is about love. He continued to say, he says, today, our band, he's talking about the Beatles. John Lennon was from the Beatles band. Okay, he said our band is more famous than Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But a few, a few months after he made that statement, December 8, 1980, he was shot to death right here in New York City. It does not pay to defy God. Tancredo Neves, former president of Brazil, he says, if I get 500,000 votes from my party, not even God could remove me from the presidency. He got the 500,000 votes. He was elected president of Brazil. But before his inauguration, he took sick. And he died. He was not inaugurated as president. It does not pray. To defy God. Marilyn Monroe. Popular singer. Great, beautiful young lady. She had a show. And during the intermission, Billy Graham went backstage to talk with her. Billy Graham says, Marilyn, no doubt you're a beautiful girl. You have money, you have power. You seem to have everything. But there's one thing missing from your life. And that is Jesus. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Marilyn, your life will be complete. He listened to Miss, she listened to Mr. Graham. And when he was finished, she said, I don't need your Jesus. I don't need your Jesus. In her home in California, 1962, she overdosed herself and died in her own house. They didn't find her body until the following day. I say it does not pay to the Three teenagers went and picked up their friends. 
They were going for a jolly ride. The mother of the friend walked with them to the gate. And as they closed the door of the car, she said, girls, May God go with you. The girl that is driving wound down her window. And she said, Unless God is going to drive in the trunk. Because inside here is full. Well, my friends, after the mother said those words, she went back to her home. Sometime later, a police came and knocked on her door. Are you so and so? Yes, sir. Come with me. He took her to the scene of the accident. All four girls were crushed to death. It is said that when they opened the trunk of the car, they found a carton of one dozen eggs. Not one of the eggs were broken. You see, that's where Jesus was driving. It does not pay to defy God. Those who know better must do better. As I told you, Belshazzar knew better. And we are told in the height of his merrymaking and Yo having fun. Que, niveau, a bloodless hand appeared upon the wall. Okay, and the words of the word hand was writing. Et, mais ça, de Mini. Mene. Mene. Tickle you fast. God has numbered thy kingdom. Oh, and finish it. Oh, thou art weighed in the balance. And found wanting. That very night, Belshazzar lost his life. That same night, he lost his life. I say, ladies and gentlemen, it does not pay to defy God. For you here tonight, there may be somebody that there is a handwriting on the wall. God has been pleading with you. For a long time, God has been pleading with you. And I want you to remember tonight, it does not pay to defy God. A man was going to sell his horse. So he's walking with his horse going down the market. So a fellow was in his yard working. And he saw the guy walking past. Say, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Where are you going? He said, I'm going down to the market to sell my horse. The fellow says, Don't say you're going to sell your horse. Say if it is the Lord's will. You're going to sell your horse. He said, Rubbish. Rubbish. This is my horse. I have arranged with the buyer. We have, we have decided on the price. He's down there waiting on me. I'm going to sell my horse. I don't need God. And he went on his defiant way. The guy continued working in his yard. 
But sometime after he saw the same guy going back. Hello, hello. How did it go? He said, if I tell you, you wouldn't believe me. He said, what happened? He said, boy, when I got down at the big, the big mango tree. Oh, let me give him a bottle. Three men jumped me and beat the light out of oh, life out of me. me. Stole my horse and they're you, gone. You know, so the man said, uh, So where are you going now? He said, I am going home. If it is the Lord's will. You know the story well. The Titanic. Titanic. The Titanic. Eh? When it was built, it was the most luxurious ship. It is said that the, re the reporter asked the engineer, tell me something. With this kind of a ship, what could possibly sink it? And the engineer looked at the reporter and he said, not even God himself could sink it. Well, you know the story. You know how it ends. And you understand. And you understand, my dear that when the crisis came, arrivé, after the merrymaking, oh, and after the joyous, happy time they were oh, having, when the ship started going down, the only thing mankind could do oh, la seule chose que faire, is call on the Almighty. De à Jésus, le tout Nearer my God to thee. Oh, plus près, Jésus, mon Dieu de toi, plus près de toi. I want you to listen to this song one more time. I want you to remember the words of the engineer. Not even God himself could sing it. But when God caused it to sink, nearer, oh, plus près, my God, oh, Dieu, to thee. Plus près de toi. Dis Amen, mes amis. Dis Amen, dis Amen. Dis Amen, nous ça encore. Dis Amen encore. Dis Amen encore. she sings the next verse just before she sings the next verse I would like to pray for somebody today whoever you are but if you feel you want to be nearer to God 
Avant de chanter l'autre verset, mes chers amis, l'autre du trophée, as I said, it does not pay to defy God. All the max can you do as she sings the next verse, if you would like me to pray for you, just get up from your seat and just come right here at the altar. Here, my pastor, pray for me. Sing that next verse for me, please. Just move out from your seat and come. For that special prayer. Like a wandering dove. Like a wandering We thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for reminding us that when we are healthy, that when things are okay, we must not defy you. But at every time and at all times, we must surrender our hearts to you. Thank you for those who have come to the altar Bless them abundantly. Thank you for all who have come to worship tonight. Bless them abundantly. Let the message resonate in their hearts tonight. May they understand your love and may they accept your love. Thank you for your grace. Merci pour grâce. Thank you for your mercy. Merci pour miséricorde. Thank you for your love. Merci pour l'amour. In Jesus name. Là non Jésus nous prier. Amen. Père bon Dieu a dit amen. Pas nous bravo pour le Seigneur nos mes amis. Dis mon Dieu merci nos mes amis. Dis mon Dieu merci, dis mon Dieu merci, dis mon Dieu merci. Dis mon Dieu merci, dis mon Dieu merci. Ah dis mon Dieu merci, dis mon Dieu merci. Dieu béni soit l'éternel. Allons dire vive le sang de Jésus. Est-ce que nous ne sommes pas contents de la soirée, chers frères et sœurs? Visiteurs et amis.